If you are a medical student planning to start the USMLE preparation early during your medical school, this is the video for you. Hey everyone, this is Malki Asad and welcome to my YouTube channel. Since personally I did not start my USMLE preparation early during my medical school, I reached out to my friend Santiago to share his experience preparing for the USMLE materials early during school. Welcome Santiago to the channel. Alright, thanks Dr. Asad for having me on your channel, I'm thrilled to be here. For those who don't know me, I'm Santiago or Santiago AQ, as some of you may have probably heard of me. And uh, well, today I want to tackle a question that Dr. Asad proposed to me a couple of days ago, which is, how do I think medical students should prep for the USMLE while in medical school? And this is a really common and important question, especially considering all the changes that are happening. So let's jump ahead with the five tips. And my first tip is that you should start as early as possible. And this is a question that everybody asks, like, how early is too early? there is no such thing as too early. Like if you start on day one of medical school, you're good. Like, in, in fact, I do think that it's a better strategy overall because you see, you can make of step one uh, as difficult of a journey as you like. And this is really the balance of understanding versus memorizing. For example, th the people who just uh, give themselves six months to study everything USMLE related, they usually make it a memory contest. So they have to remember a bunch of things that they never had to remember for this particular test. So everything becomes memory, everything becomes uh, details and facts and uh, specific things, specific molecules. So it becomes a mess, it becomes really difficult. On the other hand, if you start early, you can really make those topics second nature. You can absorb them, you can integrate them into your framework, make them unconscious. For example, I did that with antibiotics. I started learning of antibiotics with USMLE resources around my second year of medical school. And when I started, and well, by all of this process that I had during medical school of first reading them in the USMLE books, in the USMLE videos, and then applying that knowledge in clinic, in my rotations, like they just became second nature to me. So once I had my USMLE prep, all of the questions on antibiotics were just reviewing. Reviewing stuff were just easy, were just uh, helping me remember specific details but most of the content was just unconscious, was just part of my framework. I didn't have to do extra efforts to learn them, to grasp them, to memorize them. It was just like fine tuning a few details. I totally agree with the idea of using the USMLE materials early during your school, because that will make this information long-term, easily accessible. And once you start your dedicated USMLE preparation, it will make that process way easier. Santiago, finding the right resources for the USMLE preparation is one of the challenges of this process. Do you have any tips regarding that? Okay, my second tip is that you should use resources to understand, not to memorize. And in my opinion, this is the biggest mistake I see first year medical students make when they're trying to uh, study for the step one, because what do first year medical students do? Well, they buy a copy of the first aid, they take a selfie with it, and they post it on Instagram. Well, and then they just start reading the first aid like mad. And in my opinion, this is a problem because the first aid is not a book that teaches you anything. The first aid, and you just have to read a few pages to see what I mean. The first aid is a compendium of medical facts. It's a list. It's really a list of medical facts. It doesn't teach you anything. So if you try to um, like understand medicine firsthand from the first date, you're just gonna make everything a memory concept. And again, what you should do is make as much of the content as you can second nature, unconscious, make it obvious for you. So once you're in that review slash cram everything, very few things are actually memory heavy for you. So I'm gonna leave a few suggested books, videos, like primary learning resources in the comment section that you can go check it out to really learn about medicine and not make it memory dense. I agree with Santiago that in the initial phases of your medical education, you have to focus on books, on resources that would give you the foundation and the understanding before you go into more advanced reviewing. In my step one experience video, which you can find in the description below or through the card above, I divided the preparation for the step one into three stages. The first one, I called it building the basis. So use your time during your school if you're starting the preparation early to build the basis through your school materials plus USMLE books or these type of books that would give you the understanding, lay the good foundation. So once you come to the second stage, through first aid, the question bank, you have a very solid understanding that would be easy to use these resources after you built your basis. Santiago, what about the question banks? 
All right, my third tip is that you should get familiarized with USMLE style questions from very early on. Um, maybe not start doing U-world questions right off the bat in the first day of medical school. No, that's not what I mean. But you should get comfortable and you should get familiar with how the questions are being asked because you, you'll get like what I like to call the USMLE mentality. You'll start seeing, oh, so that's how they ask this specific concept. Oh, that's... Th th those are the specific details that I should focus on. I feel that question banks could be used in two ways if you're planning to start your USMLE preparation early. Either have a look at the question bank, solve some questions to see the exam style, know how to study. So you don't solve the whole question bank. Let's say you, you study microbiology and solve maybe 5, 10 questions, 15 questions after you finish studying the microbiology from other resources. The second way you can use the question banks during your preparation is by doing a specific number of questions every day or choosing to finish the whole question back after you study certain material. Personally, I prefer to study from an organized material such as a book in which ideas flow from one to another rather than a question bag in which the questions are brought up randomly. Santiago, I feel that one of the most challenging aspects of incorporating USMLE preparation with your school is finding the time and the balance to prepare for both. What is your advice on that? Okay, my fourth tip is that you should try to make your study as frictionless as possible and try to kick two birds with one stone. Uh, and this is really one of the key parts of studying for the USMLE and being successful at it during medical school. Because if you just see it as this other thing you have to do, you, you'll always tell yourself, oh, I don't, I don't have enough time. Like, oh, I have to focus on my career. I have to focus on my medical school. I have too many things I need to read. So if you just give excuses to yourself all the time, you'll never actually take the time needed to prepare for the USMLE. So what you should try to do is you should, again, kick two birds with one stone. You should use the USMLE resources as a primary learning tool for your medical curriculum. And believe me, it can be done. It just, again, needs a few select, a, a, a good selection of resources. If you try to do that with the first aid, you're gonna fail miserably. But if you try to do it, for example, with The Crush, which is one of the books that I'm gonna suggest in the comments, well, you'll find that The Crush book is actually really, really good at teaching you important things about basic and clinical sciences. And in fact, it was a way in which I learned medicine much more thoroughly than many of my peers. So try to see it in that way. Try to see that you're not learning this other thing. You're learning medicine just with a different lens, just with a different resource. And believe me, you're gonna see good damn results compared to some of your partners if you find a good resource. Again, I think that combining the USMLE materials with your school is one of the most challenging aspects of the advice that we'll be giving you through this video. Whenever you decide to use the USMLE materials early in your school, there are several things to keep in mind. The first is how determined are you to come to the States and pursue the USMLE journey? If you're 100% committed to that route, keep in mind that your medical school scores are not as important as the USMLE scores. So in this situation, you have to find the time for the USMLE preparation because this is your goal. But how can you find the time? You either have to decrease the amount of time you dedicate to your school materials or use some of the free time you have to start your USMLE preparation. The other thing to keep in mind, which many medical students overlook, is that your USMLE preparation will help you in your school preparation. I know personally many medical students who used the USMLE materials and they performed extremely well, even better than those who study school materials in their school exams. So you can see that medicine is medicine. Although there are minor differences between each school and each country, but you will see that the majority of the information will be present in the USMLE materials, in your school materials, because medicine is medicine. I also found that the preparation for the USMLE helps you in exams other than the US. So the USMLE kind of crosses borders. My friend who did USMLE Step 2 uh, did not come to the States and I asked him, do you feel that your preparation was kind of a waste of time because you studied that exam and ended up not coming to the States? He said, no, I'm extremely grateful for this materials that I studied with the USMLE. It helped me become a better doctor and even pass the exams in the country that he's in now. I'm also aware of students who after doing the USMLE exams performed extremely well on the Canadian exams. So you can see that the USMLE preparation will help you not only in the USMLE journey, but also your school and exams outside the US. So to those people that struggle to like feeding questions into the schedule, I have two advices. 
First advice, uh, try setting a micro goal that's very, very achievable. Something like, okay, I'm gonna do five questions a day. Like, really, do you, don't you have time for five questions a day? Like, five questions a day probably take you like 20 minutes. Like, don't, do, don't make it a habit of, oh, you have to turn on the computer and take all of these notes, no. Just do it, just learn from it, learn from the explanations, don't take notes, don't do flashcards, just learn from them. And secondly, just use what I like to call dead time to do questions. So for example, if you're, if you're in the bathroom, if you're doing cardio, if you're basically any activity in which you're going through Instagram, like procrastinating endlessly, five questions a day in about a year probably makes you to, uh, gets you to finish an entire Cuban. So overall, bit by bit, question by question, you're building up knowledge. And trust me, that's gonna make a difference once you start your serious prep. Whenever you're getting close to your real prep, to your real exam, like one year away from your exam, you should get serious with your study resources. So here's when you start doing U World and Ambos and Anki and you start reading the first aid, like all of those things happen over here at the end of your prep. I agree that after you use different materials, resources to start the early preparation of your USMLE, you have to focus on one or two high yield resources, such as first aid and new world. And this corresponds to the second stage that I discussed in my step one experience video, which you can find in the description below. So start your early preparation with different materials, such as books, question banks, to give you the understanding, build your base, then go to dedicated period of time using high yield resources, such as first aid or, or new world, and then go to the final stage of review and you'll be ready for your exam. So to sum up, start early on. Try setting foundations instead of memorizing. Try to integrate your curriculum with USMLE resources. Do questions early on. And when the time comes, when you're like a year away from your uh, exam, you start adding the big guns, Ambos, UWorld, Anki, and such and such and such. But well, that's really my take on the whole thing. Back to you, Dr. Asad. Thank you so much, Santiago, for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you on my channel. For our viewers, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll make sure me and Santiago to answer your questions or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad or my Facebook page Malki Asad MD. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Peace.